Oh, we just triggered a random event. Okay, so we're on our way to Sumeru City now. We just finished up third of the Archon quest from what chat is telling me. So we're gonna go underneath. We're gonna stay away from that world quest. We'll deal with that world quest another time. I just don't wanna risk it. Oh, there's a Dendroculus there. You know what? I'll just go. What the hell is that? You see that in the sky over there? some weird like water thing it looks like water dendro crystal flies let's go oh my god and i took the city where all wisdom resides oh that's such a base picture oh there it is hold on i need it to be daytime i want to see this during the day yo look at the lay of the land dude the chasm right on the outskirts right there all the mountain ranges it's just all fucking forests i assume that's like part of the like a part of the sumeru city the giant tree that's with it oh the port i think that goes into the port port ormos got these boats over here too i see a dendroculus over there all right so we're gonna get back on track and we're gonna follow the road to sumeru ah uh, we made it chat avidia forest we're on to greener pastures. All right, I want to get this waypoint, and then we'll head up into the city area. Bro, there's going to be so many shops and merchants. Mino. Hello. We got a bunch of little kids around here, too. Pog. And there it is. I just want an accessible way to get into the city until I actually get into the city. All right, let's see. Ah, uh, so this is one of the areas that I think they showed in the trailer. So, bunch of NPCs, bunch of merchants, farmers, more farmers, children. Here we go. We made it. Oh, she's got an Akasha system in her ear. Sumeru City! Ah, we finally made it! Let's go. Oh, did you see that? When those people entered the city, something on their heads lit up. Oh, did the Akasha system activate when they enter the city? One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. Mahamada. Is that one of the Darshan? That's another thing, too. I don't remember all the colors of the coats. Oh. Yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. Hmm, interesting. This is really good music, by the way. Oh, so wait, how does how does he know that there's no info on us? Does it just speak into his ear and tell him? Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. It's our beloved greater Lord Rukadavada's lasting legacy, a treasure trove of collected knowledge. After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. As long as you are within Sumeru's borders, uh, you may use an Akasha whoa. Terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. Given that that knowledge is publicly available. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumeru City and Port Ormos. Yeah, so uh, I guess that's why um, as those people were walking into the city, their Akasha devices were activating. So it's essentially just like a routing like Wi-Fi system that only works, that works better in the city and it gets worse the further out you go. Oh, so this is the thing that Tainari was telling us about. It sounds pretty amazing. You two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. I don't know if that's good. What if I had bad intentions, and you're just giving me all your information? Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. <laughs> It kind of looks like a leaf. To activate it, simply hold it in your hand and say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Oh, says this little doodad lets you access knowledge. Maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. I wouldn't be surprised if Lesser Lord Kusanali is not in the fucking system. <laughs> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Yo, this music's popping off. Let's go. Oh, yo, Paimon got one too. Whoa, just now, something clicked. And Paimon suddenly knew how to use this thing. Whoa. Seems all we need to do is concentrate on what we want to know. And bam, you get it. Oh, that'll come Dude, real handy. Dude, this looks so fucking sick. This looks awesome. Exactly. That is the power of the Akasha. It's like a scanner, like a Dragon Ball Z scouter, actually. Yeah, it's a scouter. And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City. 
May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be mm -hmm. your guide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess this is the main music of the city. Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesson Lord Kusanali. Let Paimon try. Mm -hmm. <gasps> 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm. Ah. Seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. Scorched ruins? Bro, did they fucking nuke Conria from orbit? What the fuck? Also, you can see the desert. You can see the fucking pyramid in the background over there. And like the crazy like fucking energy that's being siphoned into it. That can't be good. Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Uh, huh? Uh, oh. Kaiman doesn't sense anything. Yeah, huh? Hmm. The same thing happened to me. The Akashi didn't respond to Paimon's question. Yeah, access denied, you plebeian. Oh, come on! Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it. Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. I'll try asking the Akasha something. Maybe I'll indirectly find more information about Kusanali. Oh, smart idea. But what are you going to ask him? Think, why doesn't the Akasha answer my questions? Think Lesser Lord Kusanali. Think Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Yeah, let's do that. Many bright dots of light appeared in your mind. Probably need to calm my mind and focus more to understand what they mean. Feelings of affection, intimacy, nostalgia, sadness, and anxiety also come to my mind. These seem to be what the people of Sumeru feel about their departed Archon. Uh-oh. Paimon's getting all teary-eyed all of a sudden. It feels like the people of Sumeru really miss their Archon. Yeah, to the point where they'd rather have that Archon than a new one. They love them too much, I think. Think, why doesn't the Akasha answer my question? A vague thought suddenly comes to mind. The Akasha doesn't unconditionally respond to every inquiry. Also, even if the same inquiry is requested by multiple people, the Akasha still impacts knowledge based on each person's identity, age, experience, and other demographics. Huh. Could it be because we're outlanders and we've only just arrived? Right in Sumeru? You know, maybe we're not qualified to receive an answer to this sort of question or something. That could be a nice safeguard because I was like, oh, you just gave me all your knowledge. But now it seems to be personalized to you and like your relationship with the region. Think Lesser Lord Kusanali. Some knowledge begins to trickle in your mind for a moment, but there's wasn't really anything that I didn't already know. I wonder why. You too? Well, glad it's not just Paimon. Well, Seems no matter which way we try, we can't find anything that'll lead us to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Guess our only choice now is to try meeting with the researcher that Tainari recommended. He's from Sumeru and even has a position in the academia. Maybe he'll be able to access more info from the Akasha. Tainari wrote an address on the letter's envelope. Oh, it's not far from the city's gate. Let's head over and have a look. Hopefully he's at home. Oh, uh, a lot of merchants, a lot of NPCs. Everyone's got an Akasha hooked up to them too. All right, let me just grab these while I'm over here. Patisaras, yeah, I'm gonna need those. A lot of merchants. Oh, investigate. A lot of NPCs. Oh, it's nighttime music. I hope you guys don't mind me just randomly taking these uh, these fruits and vegetables. Oh my God, this piano's popping off. Nabia, fortune teller, interesting. Yo, these NPCs are gonna be popping off, I think. I, I think I'm really gonna enjoy interacting with these characters. Uh, you and Paimon decided to enter Sumeru City. All right. Oh, I have to go up there. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna look around real quick. Let me get this waypoint while I'm here. Yo! Oh, a spin crystal. Wait, this. Yo, my first spin crystal. Let's go. Spin crystal 80. So I had every spin crystal prior to 3.0. All right. So we have the tavern host. Oh, this is a restaurant. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me see what's in here. I just want to check out some of these local spots. Ooh, this has its own music too. Oh my god. Yo! The fucking rotisserie meats. Well, your perspective is just tunnel visioning. Oh damn. Tavern owner. Hello, friend. What do you have today? If you can't decide, just order the lambad fish roll. Oh, okay. Let's see. What what do you got on the menu, my guy? Lambad fish roll, minty bean soup, shawarma wrap, 
This guy's got flour. Better buy this while I can. <laughs> oh, they have new stuff. They got beans. Oh my God. You know what? I'm gonna go spending real quick. Star shrooms. I'll take that. He got spice. Just spice. Oh my god, that smooth jazz. Oh my god, this is really good. I was like, hold on. This tavern's about to give Angel Share a run for its money. Holy smokes. Okay, I'm gonna buy some of these too. Oh, they have an upstairs too. Okay, okay, I see you. All right, we have some researchers over here. Dude, this place is huge. This place looks really nice. I'm sure we're gonna end up coming back here over the course of the story. And if not, there's a ton of NPCs to talk to. Probably nighttime and daytime cycles, so... I'll definitely come back to that. Oh, Catherine. Oh my God, this... <laughs> Okay. Okay, younger Cyrus with a different hairstyle. I see you. Kamal, the branch master. This is literally Cyrus with a monocle. You're not fooling me, dude. Yo, can I talk to Catherine? Will she like... Catherine! Ad Astra Abyssosk. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Adventurer's Guild. Guild. Okay, I can't... You have already claimed today's... Yeah, I already did today's guild. Okay, nice. So she's here. Sweet. Like the nighttime music, it's really good. Oh, what's over here? Grand ba The Grand Bazaar. Oh shit, this place just opened up. Holy moly, there's so much. A toy seller. Bro, there's so much stuff here. Automatic doors too, sheesh. This place is massive. So many markets too. I don't even know what NPCs I can talk to and which ones I can't. The crafting table over here. Okay, so everything's really close by. Not bad. I'm literally taking everything I can get my grubby little gremlin fingers on. I'm gonna get this waypoint while I'm over here just because I can. I don't even know if I should be over here. Where the hell am I? I feel like I'm in like a restricted area. I probably shouldn't be over here. Don't mind me. I'm from Mondstadt. We do things different. Dude, there's so many characters, so many NPCs. A lot of verticality too. I don't really know how I'm gonna take in all this stuff. My god. Oh, this is... I think this is where Lesser Lord Kusanali is held. This might be the Academia, actually, now that I think about it. We've gotten too far off the beaten path, my friends. <laughs> Let's get back on track. We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Ah, uh, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but let me see what I can find in the Akasha. Sorry, the Akasha didn't respond to my query. Even someone who's been here for a really long time is actually knowledgeable. Even his personalized question didn't get answered. What? You too? But what about your abilities for getting information and all that? <sighs> I'm almost sure you'd be able to access more info than we did. Well, as I said, this isn't my area of expertise. I am but a lowly researcher, so the Akasha doesn't see a need for me to know more about the Dendro Archon. All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's never left the Sanctuary of Sorostana or made yeah. a public appearance. Yeah, that's because of the sages. Huh. Didn't expect her to be such a mysterious figure. The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors, which would explain the lack of information in the Akasha. I don't think that's what it is. I don't think she gets out much. Besides, you two should consider the bright side of things. Not being able to see Lesser Lord Kusanali may not be a bad thing. In this world, there will always be information you cannot obtain from the Akasha. Of course. Things you can never accomplish. Knowing when to yield is a form of wisdom. Take me, for example. It's a miracle if my brain Or it's a form of submission. For every three years. But Tainari? That guy can publish three papers in just a single year. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for your advice. Don't mention it. Good music here. Ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the academia or relations between the six great sages? Come find me. Mm, so by area of expertise... Hey, come on. This is a survival skill at the academia. The six great sages, one for each Darshan. Paimon's expectations were pretty low, but this is so low, it's like digging holes in the dirt. So what do we do now? Even if we want to talk to someone, we don't know anybody here. No, there's still one other person we know. Huh? Like who? Oh, Catherine at Astra Abyssosk. Oh, you're right, Catherine. The Adventurer's Guild has its own intel network. Let's hurry and find her. 
Wow, they're making Catherine relevant again. Let's go. This one might actually be a little different based on how the trailer had like that one shot that looked like it was like her foot, <laughs> her and like lesser Lord Kusanali like back to back with each other. So I don't know if that's going to be relevant at all or if this is going to be a different type of Catherine experience. <laughs> all right, let's see. Ad Astra Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Hello. Catherine, we need your help with something. Look at that keyhole on the back of her neck. I just need a keyblade, just fucking key beam. I'll be able to control her. Understood. The Adventurous Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? Error, error, does not compute, and then she just explodes. You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. <laughs> Pause, champ. I apologize. Uh oh. But I am unable to call up any relevant what? information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Damn, dude. I, yeah, the sages look pretty sus right about now. Aww, another dead end. Well, if Catherine can't help us, then we really don't know anyone else to ask now. Please do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you two. In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard uh, of information. Ah, the Aramite. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses. Okay. Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Okay. Nice. Four of thirty? What a weird name. Supposedly, they are named as such because their ranks numbered thirty at their inception. Asfond, an advisor with the Corps of Thirty, maintains good relations with the Adventurers Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the Corps of Thirty's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. Alright, thanks a bunch, Catherine. You're welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru. Oh, trust me, I would be exploiting the hell out of this place. <laughs> Just kidding. Right, off to the Citadel of Rigsar we go! Alright, let's do it. Oh, it's actually right over here, too. Yo, this place is pretty fancy looking. Look at this, bro. They're like a, a regular Knights of Favonius around here. Welcome. The Adventurers Guild told me to expect you to. Now that makes sense, because they can just send tech... I, I wonder if they can communicate through the Akasha. Nice to meet you, Asfond. We'd like to ask you about something. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> it's true that the Aramites' network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Bro, I'm going to all of these people and no one can help me. What is this? Wait, seriously? That's it? Ha! <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Called it. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. I'm sure we're gonna find out what happened to those gods. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in lesser lord Kusanali. Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Yeah. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late greater Lord Rugadavada. That's facts, dude. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. Imagine having children and you die and you're like, yeah, my kids aren't inheriting my stuff. How dare they? I worked for that stuff. They're not gonna get it. Like, that's how, that's just how that shit works. One Archon to the next, kin to kin. You're not gonna jump in here and take all the stuff she did. Not under my watch. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with Greater Lord Rukadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Yeah, and they've kept this shit going for the last five, they've literally halted their country's like understanding for their new Archon for the last 500 years. That's like next level stubbornness and arrogance. Not to mention that lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance and the academia never announces anything about her. 
as far as the people of Sumeru are concerned. Exactly. She's just a god that exists. And that's all. Really? Aww. After hearing all of that, Paimon sort of feels bad for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! <laughs> but who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. No, you're spot on. Besides, I'm sure the god of wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. All right. Well, thanks for the info, Osfond. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurer's Guild. This guy was speaking straight facts. Like, I actually appreciated him. Seems Osfond was right about most people's attitudes here. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, if the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. Oh my god. They're being fucking indoctrinated. They're like, hey, sometimes the government can't tell us stuff, and we should just accept that like fucking sheep. We've been asking for information nonstop ever since we got to Sumeru. <laughs> oh god. The harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Ah, uh, these people are so content. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? We do, Paimon. You and me. That's two people. That's more than at least one. Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, that's the voice from the trailer! Oh my god, who is this? Yo! Huh? Who are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? I love her voice. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyarzad, one of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Dunyarzad. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? Absolutely not. I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in hopes that she would bless him with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. Thanks a lot, sages. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Okay, and then what happened? And then... The Calamity came, but to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. Yo, let's go! Good shit, King! At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, You don't need a god. You had all the strength in you. You had all of the capabilities. Oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun, and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, we'll be wherever you go. Yeah, what an amazing story. Yeah, thanks for the story! Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. <laughs> uh, in a way. It seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. I wonder if that legend, did they predict the cataclysm? Like the calamity that befell Sumeru, like the region itself? I don't know how much of a legend or how true that is. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So did you two know that, uh, uh... Um, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. Uh, okay. What's up with that Eremite? Damn, she fucking booked it. Sheesh. Hey, wait! Uh, what the heck just happened? It looks like they're searching for someone. Hmm. Dunyarzad was acting super nervous just now. You think they're looking for her? This stinks! We finally managed to find a lead about Lesser Lord Kusanali! We can't let them get in the way now. Let's see if we can get rid of them. Then we can catch up with Dunyarzad! Have you two seen a brown-haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for her. Nope, I'm new in town. I don't know anybody. Uh, did she have bandages wrapped around her wrist? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? Paimon, why are you further describing the suspect, thus confirming that you've seen who they're talking about? Uh, yeah, she went... That way! She probably did go that way! Quick! After her! Bruh! Oh my god! <laughs> that she 
keep him busy for a while. Let's hurry and find Dunyarzad. Pretty sure that's literally the way she went. What direction did Paimon point in? She pointed that way? Well, she didn't go this way. So there's only one other way they could have. she could have gone. My immersion. There you are, Dunyarzad. We thought you might have been long gone by now. Oh, it's you two. Oh, you startled me there. You know what, Paimon? A plus for actually trying. You can relax now. We threw those people looking for you off the trail. Uh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Uh-oh. Looks like there are some coming this way. Why is she... Like, what's up with her? Huh? More of them? Then what are we standing here for? Run! No, wait, I... Uh... My body isn't in the best shape. Uh, it's difficult for me to run. Uh, how about we find somewhere to hide? Okay, sounds good. There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. Probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. All right, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. All right, we gonna be some stealth gamers? No? Okay, good. All right, the trail of the God of Wisdom. Enter the tavern. Wow, we were just at the tavern too. I guess I jumped the gun and checked out these places a little too soon. Yo, this fucking piano is literally going to be my undoing. I love this shit. I'm gonna spend like an hour's worth of playtime just listening to the music. Oh, we made it. Oh, they shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait, stand down, Dia. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! There she is! Yo, her arm looks so fucking badass. Paimon's like, Nani! <laughs> my lady, who are these two? My lady? Oh my god. Oh my god, Lord have mercy. They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. Oh my god, wait, did, did they, so they know each other? I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Oh my god, I love her fucking voice. Wait a sec! Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? You tell him, Paimon. I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. Oh, is she like of royalty or something? And this is, I thought she was like in trouble. Like, I thought she was like a criminal or something and the Eremite were looking for her, but it seems like she's important and she's like supposed to be protected and she got away from them. My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. God, she looks incredible. She has such a sick fucking design. Hey, Dunyarzad already said she doesn't want to go back. Why are you still pushing her? Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? I'll pay you double. Wait, what? If they're paying you 10, I'll pay you 20. And then you have to do what I say. How much more do I have to pay you to become your employer? So you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time, and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about Mora. I don't know what you think of us Eremites, but let me say this. I like Mora, but I'll never go against my principles. I don't know about that. The description of the Eremite says they'll take any job if the Mora is right. I don't know. You might be a different breed because, you know, you're a five-star playable character, but the, the other ones that seem like they'll do whatever it takes to get money. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but... My conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt you. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. I, I respect that. I respect that. She's like, yo, I'm doing this for my job, but like, you also gotta realize I'm making sure you, I'm making sure you're okay. No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. I still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just change the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. Yo, living with you? Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father, and I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. The Dendro Archon. Because she saved me. The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, 
It is to me. Yo, I really like this character. I really like her. She's got conviction. <sighs> Fine. I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination. Not because I agree with you. Okay, that's fine enough. Thank you, Dia. <sighs> Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up. And I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Yo, I thought she was gonna be like, yo, what was that? Double, triple? I'll take that. Hey, you'll love to see it. Hey, looks like they've reached an understanding. What are we here for? What are we doing? <sighs> Dunyazar, are you all right? I'm fine, really. I, I just feel a little tired now that things have calmed down. <sighs> My lady, stop trying to look tough. We're already in a tavern, so let's rest up and grab some grub. I'm sorry for worrying you two. If you don't mind, I'd like for you to join us. Hell yeah, this place has some good food. Sure! After you rest up, we want to hear more about Lesser Lord Kusanal. Yeah, she said someone saved her. Is she talking about the Dendra Archon? All right, rest in the tavern for a while. All right. Dunyarzad, we asked a lot of people when we first arrived, and almost nobody was interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. So, what made you want to follow her? Well, remember when you asked me if I knew how to meet the Dendro Archon? Even though I don't know how, I think I've actually seen her before. Oh, interesting. Huh? Really? <laughs> Were you dreaming? Yes, it was when I was a child. Oh! At the time, Maybe? my illness had kept me bedridden for the better part of a year. I was stuck inside and couldn't make any friends, and my parents did their best to find treatments for me. But even then, the Akasha didn't have any helpful information. My younger self no longer had any hopes or dreams. Uh-oh. One flare-up was so bad that I was in a semi-conscious state for several days. Then one night, I woke up alone in my room. I was terrified. My body was paralyzed. Even if I cried, there was no sound. At that moment, an ethereal voice spoke in my mind. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Holy moly. Oh my god. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Oh my god. This is so cool. What? They have fucking 2D freaking cutscenes. <laughs> Who are you? How do you know my name? Oh my god. This is actually like low key immersive. I really appreciate this. Please do this at every opportunity you can. Um, how do I explain this? You might not be able to understand, but actually, I know everything about you. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, so that's obviously Nahida, Lesser Lord Kusanali, the same voice from the, uh, from the Golden Apple. Oh my god, she is so precious. Look at her. Of course. I know that you're scared of thunder, that you hate taking medicine every morning. Aww. And that you love counting the petals on your mom's skirt. Yeah, she's like, I am the leaf, I am the grass, I am the trees. I see and hear everything. I know you. Wow, oh, you really do know everything. That is so precious. Dinner is odd. Is there anything you want? What? Not really. I can't go anywhere or do anything. Huh? But aren't you a child? All children have wishes. Tell me what you want, and maybe I can make it happen. But uh, can you make my illness go away? Oh. I'm sorry. But I'm not powerful enough to do that right now. Then can you be my friend? After that, the voice said, Okay, I'll be your friend. Although my body was suffering during those days, that voice encouraged me. 
and told me many wondrous things. You know what I thought just now? Lesser Lord Kusanali is basically a child god. And like the people that are like running the country have clearly never had children. And they're just a bunch of old boomers that don't know how to take care of kids. So they're just like, we're just gonna shut you in your room and we're not gonna listen to you. And we're gonna, we're gonna say what's best for you and what's best for everybody else. That's literally how I feel like the this is going. Like the, the, the six sages are just like parentless fucking like boomers and they have like this child that they're like what do we do with this like it like what do we do with it you know they're just so ill-equipped beyond my window was the flourishing sumero city beyond the city was a lush rainforest and beyond that was the wall of samiel deserts and all of tevat once i finally made it through that bout of illness i couldn't hear that voice anymore i told my mother about it but she said that I must have been dreaming. But I know that that voice wasn't a figment of my imagination. Before that, I had never heard of Tevat. So you believe the voice you heard was Lesser Lord Kusanali? Yes, for sure. If it weren't for that voice, I would have never grown curious about the outside world. Nor would I have learned how to read and enjoy so many books. Jeez, she must be sheltered if she doesn't even know about the, the fucking continent of Tevat. That voice sparked a desire for wisdom. Or the world of Tevat. It had to have been the Dendro Archon. I've been hoping for a chance to repay her kindness. In fact, I was running around today to help prepare the Subzerus festival for her. Wait! Was she the character that was in the trailer? That when, like, the girl danced and, she, like, the next scene, like, she was gone? I think that was her. Oh, my God. Yeah. She was the same, like, model, the same design, too, the same dress. What's the Subzerus festival? Oh, my God. That is so fucking dope. So she was actually in that cutscene. It's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday which was the day that she was found by the sages. It's actually an old holiday that originally celebrated Greater Lord Rukadavata's birthday. When she passed away, the holiday eventually became a celebration of the Lesser Lord's birthday. So who celebrates or remembers Rukadavata's death? I could definitely see some people being like salty, like how dare you remember this god? Our, our god died and people have already moved on, you know? I heard everyone was overjoyed when they welcomed her back to Sumeru. In those days, the festival was a huge deal. <laughs> but now... But because of the academia's influence, people have gradually lost interest in the festival. These fucking assholes. The academia actively participates in Sumeru's many holidays dedicated to Greater Lord Rukudavata. But when it comes to the Subzeros festival, forget any funding. They practically act like it doesn't exist. Bro, they are so salty and like simping so hard for their old god, it's not even funny. Like, I just feel like they're scared too. That like, if we cope hard enough, we can just like make all of our things that we, like we can just get things to be the way that they used to be. Maybe they see Lesser Lord Kusanali's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukadavata's death. So they're reluctant to celebrate it. Yeah, that's, that's the case it seems. Aww. But that's awful! It is. It's absolutely terrible. Sure, the Greater Lord founded Sumeru, but hasn't Lesser Lord Kusanali been the one quietly protecting us for the past few hundred years? If the Akasha system is Gnosis powered, I wonder how it's Gnosis powered if the Archon also has like the Gnosis in their possession. So like, I hope that they're not like using or like siphoning in a malicious way to get the Akasha system to work for them. <clears throat> Just remember that we're still out in public. Don't get too carried away now. I know that people over by the Grand Bazaar still hold the Subzeros Festival to this day, but I hadn't met any of them before, so I was never able to contribute. But recently, I made a friend there who also follows Lesser Lord Kusanali. Oh, is it Nilu? I gave her my savings because I want her to throw a wonderful festival this year. That's the least I could do for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Nilu actually does the Subzerus Festival dance. But like, we also now know that the Subzerus Festival has nothing to do with Lesser Lord Kusanali, but it's a celebration that is in honor of Kusanali's birthday. But Kusanali is not the goddess of flowers. So I'm like, it's the Subzerus Festival. It's not the Kusanali Festival, you know, or the Archon Festival. So it's like, what is like, what's Subzerus all about, you know? Hold on, my lady, does this friend happen to be Nilu? Let's go. The one who sends flowers to the estate. Sends flowers to the estate? Goddess of the flowers? I, I really think Nilu is a goddess. And they said it in the trailer too. And they showed so many scenes of her in the trailer too. And I was like, why do they keep showing this girl? Like, this is so weird how, how much importance they're putting on her. Yes, that's her. Mm, I saw her leaving the other day with a nervous look on her face. 
It seemed like she was hiding something in her arms. Did you give her something? Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I didn't have much Mora prepared, so I had Nilu sell one of my skirts. I've agreed with Nilu to meet up at the Grand Bazaar today and see how things are coming along. Dia, would you accompany me? Sure. That's quite the trip, though. I'll carry you. No, that would be too much. Even for you. You might as well just accept the lift. If I let you walk, who knows how long it'll take us. And if anything happens to you, then I'd really never hear the end of it from your father. But of course. And Nilu will be thrilled to hear there are more people interested in Lesser Lord Cusinelli. Let's see. Go to the Grand Bazaar. Dude, I'm hitting up all the places that I literally just did a speed run through when I first got here. And I'm just like, damn, bro. I could have just followed the story and it would have showed me all of these awesome places. But you never know, you know? You never know what they're going to show you in the story versus what you find on your own. It's going to take me a while, though, to get used to, like, where everything is. That was the same thing with Inazuma. Inazuma wasn't as bad, but this one, there's, like, so many twisting paths and doorways and like what the hell's up here oh is this the stage yo this is the stage where she was singing where she was dancing and then like all the bro she's literally the goddess of flowers because when she was dancing in the trailer there was like this crazy like effect going on that was like create like all the flowers were like blooming and whatnot so either she's the god of the flowers or that dance she knows is like the power of that god it's one or the other dude you're not pulling the wool over my eyes and if you did and i'm just talking out my ass then i don't know there she is Yo! She looks great, too. Sorry I'm late, Nilu. Oh, Dunyarzad. It was taking you so long that I assumed you got trapped at home. But you made it in the end. God, all of the voice acting is really good. I've been, like, really looking into, like, voice, like the voice acting and being like, I, I wonder if there's going to be any character's voice that doesn't match their design or a character's voice that I'm just not going to vibe well with. But all of them have been really good so far. Uh-oh. But if Dia's here... That means you got caught, right? You could say that, uh, but everything worked out. She's on our side now. Uh, not completely. Oh, and who are these two? Oh, meet the Traveler and Paimon, my two newest friends. They're visitors who just arrived at Sumera City and are looking for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. So you're followers from another land? That's wonderful. You two absolutely mustn't miss the Subzeris Festival. By the way, Dunyarzad, we've already started decorating the Grand Bazaar. It looks spectacular. Thanks to your generous contribution. Oh my god, guys, she's got twin tails. I just noticed that. You're very welcome. It's the only thing I could do. Do you still have enough more? Uh, probably? But don't sweat it. We've already finished renovating the stage. Come on, I'll show you. And she has red hair? Bruh. Those are like my two fucking weaknesses. Holy shit. Oh my God. Yo, music's popping off over here. Sheesh. All right, let's keep it going. Go to Nilu to see the stage. Wow, this place is amazing. Not bad. Huh. Last time I was here, the stairs were full of holes. The stairs were nothing. A little while ago, we discovered that the tree above the stage had a huge chunk of bark ready to fall off. Mr. Zubair was worried sick. Zubair. We reported it to the Academia many times, but they never sent anyone to deal with it. We didn't want anything bad happening, so we were going to cancel all the stage performances. Why didn't anyone come to handle it? Yeah, because the Academia is a bunch of fucking boomers. Oh, probably because it was the theater asking. They're like, fuck the arts and music and drawing and painting and all that. All that fucking believer shit, right? All that dreamer nonsense. Where's your facts? Where's your logic? Where's your knowledge? The Academia looks down on performers like us. They probably think it would be best if the theater closed down completely. I hate these sages. These sages, like, they're so arrogant, dude. We can't let that happen, though. Not only would everyone involved in the theater go hungry, but then we wouldn't be able to hold the Subzerus Festival anymore. Mmm, this music is so good. I think this is my favorite song I've heard so far. Thank the Dendra Archon for Dunyarzad. But the more she gave us, we hired someone to patch up the tree, and we also gave the stage a much-needed makeover. This looks really nice, the shot. The stage is going to be even prettier when it's festival time. I can't wait for you to see it. And I can't wait to see you on the stage. You've been practicing so long already. It's almost time for your dream to become reality. Your dream? <laughs> it's our dream. I'll do my best for the two of us. Nilu, what are you going to be doing at the festival? I'm going to be busting a move. She'll be dancing the dance of Subzerus. The most important performance at the Subzeros Festival. Dunyarzad, 
Have you told him the origin of this holiday? Oh? I only told them about the Greater Lord and Lesser Lord so far. So far? Okay. Oh, damn. Then I'll tell you two about how this holiday came to be. According to legend, the Sabzerus Festival was originally the Goddess of Flowers' birthday celebration for the Greater Lord. Okay, wait a minute. It was originally the Goddess of Flowers' birthday celebration. A long, long time ago, on one of Greater Lord Rukadevata's birthdays, her friends threw her a celebratory banquet. Ah, I see. Some of the gods got drunk. One started playing music, and the Greater Lord started singing. So the goddess of flowers began to dance. I see now. It's a celebratory, like, gift to the Greater Lord on their birthday. One of the gods got drunk. Yeah, I guess, I wonder if Venti was at that party. As she danced upon the grass, Countless beautiful Parisars began to bloom wherever she stepped. God damn it. I hate the misdirection of this. I thought I was on to something. I guess that was right. There were more than one god. But so was the original god Subzeru? And the dance of Subzeru was a present to the greater lord on their birthday? Those brilliant purple flowers became her dazzling stage. All the gods clamored. Oh, if only time could stop at this very moment. Sounds like they had a good time. Of course they did. When people mention the gods, they always think of the Archon War. But Sumeru's gods also had happy times. Think about Conria now when we think of the gods. Although they aren't around anymore, they're preserved in our tradition of dance. This outfit I'm wearing is apparently based on how the goddess of flowers looked. Okay, so she's like emulating the goddess of flowers. I was almost, I was onto something, chat, okay? I fucking knew it. I was like, this is too close to be a coincidence, okay? She's dressing like her. She's dancing like her. She's basically cosplaying the goddess of flowers. Though we're just tiny people compared to the divine, we still have to do our best to make sure that the birthday girl feels loved on her special day. Nilu, you of all people will definitely be able to convey our well wishes to the Dendro Archon. I also noticed that you went the extra mile and scattered Padisaras around the stage. They symbolize the goddess of flowers, after all. It's just a shame that all the real Padisaras went extinct after her death. Oh? Yeah. The greater lord brought forth Patisaras in memory of the goddess of flowers. New Patisaras. She ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful purple. All right, so we're going to get a Patisara quest item by the end of the Archon quest. Clip it and ship it. Thinking about the goddess of flowers dance makes me wish I could have seen it. If my stage were anything like that, uh... I'd be thrilled if I had just two real body Saras on the stage. Oh, damn, those two other... Actually, there's a few of those cases that aren't filled with flowers. <sighs> so, Traveler and Paimon, what do you think? Interested in the Sabzerus Festival? Will you two be coming? I wonder if Sayid and like Alrani and Hosini and all of the other NPCs from Sumeru that we've seen thus far, if they'll be here for that, that'd be really cool. All of Lesser Lord Kusanali's followers will be there for her birthday. It'll be a good opportunity for you to learn more about her. Ooh, Paimon thinks that's a great idea! You sure it's not because you want to watch Nilu dance? Of course Paimon wants to watch! Those two things aren't mutually exclusive, you know. <laughs> so how about we all attend the Subzerus Festival together? Junior Zod, let me show you which stage decorations we've picked out so far. Traveler and Paimon, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, then feel free to explore the area. Everyone at the Grand Bazaar loves Lesser Lord Kusanali, and we're all looking forward to the Sabzerus Festival. In that case, we'll take a look around. Let's see, walk around the bazaar. Oh, okay, we're gonna talk to all these people. My grandmother said that Greater Lord Rukadavata is a beloved deity and honored by all. And Lesser Lord Kusanali is too. If the goddess of flowers ever knew Lesser Lord Kusanali, then she would certainly have wished to be her friend and hold celebrations for her, too. Sure, those folks at the Academia might not like it, but what's a festival without song and dance? Fuck the Academia, all right? All my homies hate the Academia. Nilu, your outfit looks amazing. There's also something different about you from when we first met up. <laughs> I thought I'd add a little extra pizzazz to my dress for the festival. See? God, she looks amazing. And she's got a tattoo on her back. She's got stigmatas confirmed. I've noticed that you can't keep your eyes off that crown over there. Would you like to try it on? <laughs> May I? Of course. 
the legends say that the goddess of flowers had beautiful horns on her head. So this crown was made to reflect that. Yeah, she's literally cosplaying. She's got the horns and everything. Ah, uh, Dunyarzad, you look absolutely stunning with it on. It's like I'm looking at the goddess of flowers herself. Hey, is that who Paimon thinks it is? What? It Catherine. Catherine's outside of her podium? Oh my god, that's so fucking weird. That's so fucking weird. She's walking like a human being. <laughs> yeah, time to report back to my fucking harbinger overlords. Come to think of it, Paimon's only ever seen her behind the counter at the Adventurers Guild. This is the first time we've ever seen her taking a break. Hey, Catherine. Hmm? Oh, hey, it's the Traveler and Paimon. What's shaken? What's shaken? No, it's Ad Astra Abyssosk. Welcome to the Grand Bazaar. Oh, break time Catherine sure sounds a lot less formal than usual. Paimon was still waiting for her to say Ad Astra Abyssosk. Sure. <laughs> Standing behind the counter at the Adventurer's Guild doesn't require any complicated functions. Functions. She knows she's a robot. Or a puppet, rather. But... Saying and doing the same old things over and over again can get pretty monotonous. Like watching the same Fontaine movie day after day. Confirmed! Fontaine has movies! Bro, we fucking called that! We were like, yo, uh, fucking Xavier wants to be a filmmaker? We're gonna go to Fontaine, they're gonna have those little old-timey black and white movies? She literally just confirmed that they have movies. Let's go. I hope they have like a movie theater. They're already filming stuff, so clearly movies exist. But like, it's cool that when we go there, we can expect something like that, you know? You know like how they have like the spin dials, like the, the spin crystals for music? I hope we can go out into the world and find like reels, like film reels, and watch like little short snippets of, of whatever they made. Take you two for example. You travel across to VAT to enrich your lives and gain new experiences. Bro, Catherine is literally emoting. This is insane. Well, we enjoy traveling across to VAT and all that, but we're mainly looking for clues about his sister. Yes, and you should keep searching. Sometimes the answers we're looking for aren't necessarily at our intended destination. Instead, they're found along the way. Huh. I heard someone say something pretty similar recently. Uh, anyways, what brings you out here, Catherine? Are you also a fan of the Sub-Zero's Festival? No, not particularly. I guess you could say that I'm loving the recent atmosphere here. If festivals bring happiness to everyone, then that's where their true value lies. It looks like it's about time for me to be heading back now. Oh my god, you had literally like five minutes of freedom in the last two years. Oh my god, that's so depressing. All right, we'll see you next time at the Adventures Guild. Oh, by the way, thanks for connecting us with the Aramites. We've already made some great friends in Sumeru City thanks to you. I'm sure you two will get along well with the people here. You've already been blessed by the element of Dendro after all. <laughs> See you around. Yo, stay blessed, Catherine. Hmm. There's something really different about Catherine today. Hmm. Hey, traveler. Paimon. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. So in the trailer that we saw, the teaser trailer that we saw, it showed Lesser Lord Kusanali back to back with Catherine, and we know that Catherine has never left. The Adventurers Guild before. So I wonder if Lesser Lord Kusanali, like similar to how she like hacked the Dodocom at the Golden Apple, I wonder if that was Lesser Lord Kusanali taking a little stroll around Sumeru City because she's trapped up there. Paimon was like, there's something different about her today, but why today as opposed to any other day? And apparently, Catherine might be as a puppet, similar to that of like Raiden Shogun and Skatamush. So that technology of puppetry is exists in the world. And if it's technology it can be manipulated and lesser lord kusanali if she was able to do that with the dodocom i assume she did it with the akasha system and could do the same thing with someone like Catherine. if she's within the region because you have to be within the city limits to use the akasha system and that's how she would be able to hack Catherine and do that oh hey dear what's going on i've got something to tell you my lady knows you're looking for ways to meet lesser lord kusanali and she's been trying to come up with a way to help you well I have an idea that might help. It might not necessarily pan out, so don't get your hopes up too much. 
I'll need to take you two somewhere and ask someone some questions. What about Dunyazard? My lady is feeling a little worn out at the moment. Nilu's found a place for her to rest. After I take my lady home, let's meet in front of the Citadel of Regzar. Sounds like a plan! Let's head over to the Citadel of Regzar and wait for Dia! <sighs> Sorry, I'm late. It took some convincing for the master and mistress to believe that Miss Dunyazad was only sitting in the port for a while because she was in a bad mood. Anyway, I guess I should be thanking you. I haven't seen Miss Dunyazad that happy in a long time. If it wasn't for you two, she probably would have been caught and dragged back much earlier. You sure sound a whole lot nicer than when we first met, Dia. Who would have thought you had such a soft spot for Dunyarzad? It's called being a professional. I'm a bodyguard, and I work for whoever's paying. It's just interesting that the one who you're protecting is also paying. <laughs> Look, Dia's blushing. Yep, that's a blush if I've ever seen one. Ugh, listen, you two. Yo, a ship is formed, ladies and gentlemen. I don't expect to be working for Miss Dunyarzad very long, but I hope to finish things on a positive note if possible. Let's cut the chit-chat and head into the Citadel. We'll see if the person I know has a way for you two to meet with the Lesser Lord. I don't care if she's involved with Dunyazad, I'm still gonna, like, simp over her. Ah, <laughs> Dia! What are you doing here? And well, well, didn't expect to see you three together. <laughs> I take it you all know each other already? Mm-hmm. We met this morning after the Adventurers Guild pointed us to Ozfan for more info. This man was spitting straight facts all morning. No kidding. Huh. So, where's Ruksha? I thought I'd help these two out by asking about the theft. Anything you can tell him? Rookshaw's gone over to the Academia. The Grand Sage recently ordered Sumero City to begin bolstering its defenses, so people from all over have been called back to the city. <clears throat> Since you've already mentioned the theft, I suppose I might as well tell him what we know. Appreciate it, Chief. Uh, theft? Sorry, what the heck are you guys talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. They're talking about how Nilu stole my heart. Just recently, the Academia lost something. And there's a chance the item is connected with the Dendro Archon. This case oh! might just somehow help you in meeting her. The Divine Knowledge Capsule! <laughs> I suppose that's one way to look at it. But if you ask me, the case is more about the Academia than anything else. I think it's the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Makes sense, right? Divine Knowledge Capsule. Ian. The Academia recently sent a convoy to pick up an important package from Aru Village. Word got out, and the convoy was robbed on its way back. The Grand Sage took the whole matter very seriously. Not only did he dispatch the Matra, but also enlisted our help in the search for leads. I love this song! All we know so far is that whatever was stolen is currently in Port Ormos. You two have heard of Port Ormos, haven't you? It's the largest commercial port in all of Sumeru. You can travel there by leaving Sumeru City and heading south along the river. Damn, un unfortunately, it's not like the longest commercial port in all of Tevat, you know? Because fucking Marjorie never shuts her mouth up about saying that shit. The Academia's grip isn't long enough to reach all the way to Port Ormos, so the city's a little more laid back, meaning the population's also a mixed bag. You never know who you'll meet there. Apparently, what was lost has a great deal to do with the Akasha, knowledge, but even the gods. I'm afraid I don't have any other details for you, though. How did they obtain... What is this divine knowledge capsule? If you're interested, maybe you could head to Port Ormos and ask around yourselves. If you want my advice, try introducing yourselves as students of the Academia once you're there. Yo, we can use that letter of recommendation as our scapegoat. Are you serious, Chief? All the Academia students are in Sumeru City, you know. Why should they pretend to be students in Port Ormos? <laughs> if you're also interested, just go there and see what happens. Mmm, I like this guy. Count me out. I've got plenty of work to do here for the Homayani family. And take it from me, if you two really do decide to visit Port Ormos, you'd best watch your backs. Let's just say that the Aramites there aren't nearly as friendly as those here in Sumeru City. I think that's where we meet Al Haitham. So that's where we saw him in the trail. Uh, not in the trailer. That's where we saw him in the uh, in like the first showcase of characters. He was at the port. There are even some extremists who go around shouting slogans like "Retake Sumeru for the Scarlet King." Word is that more and more are joining their movement. They're becoming a real headache for Chief and the others. That's probably the Desert God. You bet they are. 
The Scarlet King's been dead for thousands of years. Now they start spreading rumors of his return. Oh dear. Oh, is that what the cutscene meant? Like the dialogue in the cutscene, they were like, oh, we'll bring back our god. Is that, was it the Scarlet King they were talking about? Not everyone's like you, Chief. Even the desert natives who abandoned their homes in the wilderness still wish to have a god of their own. <sighs> well, Traveler, that's about all the information we have for you. Thanks, Dia! And you too, Asfan! Yo, I really like this Archon quest. It's really, like, interactive. All of the NPCs are... Like, it feels like everything has, like, purpose. Like, everything is just really well delivered. Since we've gathered all we could for the moment in Sumeru City, let's head to Port Ormos and see what we can find next. Even the beginning, it was like super trippy with like the spirits and being like tripped out and seeing visions and like dreams and shit. Like that was super like unexpected and interesting. Miss Dunyarzad is looking forward to seeing you both at the Subzerus Festival. So be sure to get yourselves back here in time for that. The pacing and delivery of information has been pretty steady. Nothing is dragged on too much where I just feel like, okay, I'm just getting information overload. Like they gave Kali a good amount of screen time and, and like exposition. They explained the withering. They explained the little forest spirits. They explained the, you know, the Akasha system really well. We learned a little bit about the Aramite and now we got the Subzeros. Like they're just giving us a lot of information chunks, but none of it feels like overwhelming. Good. Then we'll see you both at the Subzerus Festival. Holy shit, is that soon? That's like in a couple of days, no? Lost in prosperity. Head to Port Ormos. Oh my god, the unappreciated carving. I don't know what that is. Is that the event? I think that's the event. All right, so that's the Kali event. And then the prospect. Okay, so this is the car. This is the... Ooh, I got a new camera? Exquisite camera. A camera that Razi borrowed from Lord Sagama Bay. Oh my god, Alice knows this person. Lord Sagama Bay is that name has been brought up before with Alice. It will come in handy when you take pictures of beautiful scenery. Look for inspirations in the wilderness or wish to keep festive memories. This camera is adorned with metal decorations and thus looks a lot more expensive than regular cameras. Be careful with it. According to the leasing agreement, it will only work within the Sumeru bounds, uh, borders. Interesting. This was fantastic. This was a great rundown. Like I just said, they kind of given us a lot of the, like the pacing's been great. The character introductions, even the NPCs. Finally having Sumeru, finally being in the region, hearing the music, seeing the characters, fully seeing like the extent of my characters being built has been really fun and exciting as well. I know that we're still very far off from finishing act one at the very least. We still have to see other characters. I think we're going to meet Dory. We're going to meet Al Haitham. We have to, you know, attend the Subzerus festival. I don't know if that's an act one situation or an act two situation, but um, so far this has been great. Let's talk to these guys real quick and then we'll wrap up. It's been a while since I've visited the Citadel of Regzar. I'll catch up with Chief for a bit before I head back myself. He really did a lot for me in the past. Remember, to get to Port Ormos, just follow the river south from Sumeru City's port. Just be sure to take care of yourselves out there. We'll meet again at the Subzerus Festival. Festival must be in a couple days then. It seems like it's really close. <laughs> You two must really be something if you've got Dia the Flame Mane speaking on your behalf. The Corps of Thirty isn't officially overseen by the Academia, but because we're hired mercs, there's still lots of sensitive intel that I can't reveal to you. In the end, when it comes down to it, the city's safety is both the Corps and Academia's top priority. I've told you all I can about what was stolen from the Academia. As for why you should pretend to be students in Port Ormos, I'll leave that for you to find out yourself. Uh, and the music for this area, dude, I just really like Sumeru. It's such a big breath of fresh grass and leaves and air and everything else. It's lush. The environments look great. I still have to get used to where everything is. I'm still a little confused and lost to where certain things are. You got the merchant there. You got the, the blacksmith there. You have the uh, crafting there. And we've only tackled, we've only tackled this plate, like this area and this area. So... There's still a lot of like untapped potential for the rest of the region. What I think I'm gonna do as well, similar to what I did for my Mondstadt and Liu adventures, or at least my Liu adventures, I think I'm going to stick to exploring within the confines of what I've explored for the uh, the Statue of the Seven, and I will keep general exploration to what I do on stream. So I'll probably explore like maybe some of these outskirts. I'll ask my mods if there's anything that I should avoid exploring and saving for stream content, but for 
for the most part, I, I'm not going to get through every piece of exploration on stream. So I'll try to feature as much as I can on stream. And then when I'm off stream, I'll just be making general progress. I'll just have to make sure I stay away from the NPC that's over here for the world quest. But everything else should be relatively easy, easy, smooth sailing for me as of right now. But yeah, this was great. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. I'm going to be streaming again on Friday. So for those of you who have been enjoying, if you guys joined late, this will be archived immediately after the stream is over. And we have a ton of we actually haven't even been over here too. some of the NPCs during the daytime just showed up. But uh, I'll be streaming again on Friday, same time. And hopefully Friday stream, we can finish the second half of this art of this act of the Archon quest. And then once I figure out my schedule to get my wisdom teeth taken out, we can figure out how we'll go about doing act two before the 3.1 live stream special program. So overall, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was fun and uh, we'll be getting into it pretty soon.